Hi and welcome to this video. My name is Edgar Kautzner and I'm the Managing Consultant at Monero. This is the third video in our Data Warehouse Automation Series. During the first and second videos we covered an introduction to data warehousing and also an introduction to data warehouse automation. In this video I'm going to use the Agilius Data Warehouse Automation Platform to show you a full end-to-end -end overview of creating a data warehouse from scratch. I'll be speeding up the video along the way to compress about 90 minutes of work into this 25 minute video. Future videos will show the full process at normal speed. So let's get started. First, we'll talk about the database we'll be using for the exercise. We're going to use the Sequila database, which is a sample data set built on the MySQL database platform. The story behind the sample database is all about a DVD rental company. This DVD rental company uses a system to record all the rental activity for the business, and all data entered into the system is saved in a transactional database. This transactional database is the main data set we'll be working with. The data set contains a variety of information, such as information about customers and staff, such as their personal details, information about each store, so the location, manager, and other information, information about each film, so the title, the language, the genre, etc., and also information about when each film was rented and returned. Some other information that's collected are metrics about uh, how long each film was rented and also how much revenue the rental generated. Now, all of this data has been collected in a transactional database, which isn't structured to be optimized for reporting and analytics. This is what the database looks like. We discussed in the first video in our data warehouse automation series that a star schema is the best data structure to support analytics. So in this example, we're going to transform the transactional data in the rental database to a star schema. So this will allow quick and easy analysis of the rental transactions at the DVD rental company. We're going to build a fact table containing metrics, such as how long each film was rented for and how much revenue was generated, and also a series of dimensions, allowing this data to be sliced and diced by staff member, customer, store, film, and date. So let's now talk about the process we'll go through. So I'm going to start off by creating a destination database for the warehouse in Microsoft SQL Server. I'll then connect the destination data warehouse to Agilius. After that, I'm going to create a connection to my source database, which is the Secula DVD rental database in MySQL that we've been talking about. Later on in the video, we're going to connect to another data source, which is a CSV file, to load our date dimension. So once we've loaded our Secula database, I'll then start the process of extracting data from that database to my load tables. I'll then transform the data into my staging tables. And from there, I'll create some dimension tables and a fact table. And once I've done that, I'll join them all together to create a star schema to export the metadata to Yellowfin, which is a front-end reporting tool or data visualization tool to analyze the data immediately. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so we're on the Agilius logon screen and you can see that the console window indicates that the Agilius server has started. So I'm going to log on first of all. Okay, so now what I want to do is to create uh, a new database that's going to house my data warehouse. So I've switched over to SQL Server and creating my database container. Okay, so you can see that there's an empty database sitting there. Now we switch back to Agilius, and what I'm doing now is adding a connection to my new database and telling Agilius that I'm going to use that database as the destination for my data warehouse. So now I've added the connection to the SQL Server database that I created a moment ago. I'm just going to verify that I've put the details in properly. Okay, and you can see that the connection has succeeded. What I'm gonna do now is create a connection to my source database. So as I mentioned before, we're using a MySQL database, which is the Secular transactional database. You can see I've just switched over to MySQL and you can see that all of the tables are in there. And I'm going to add my source now. Okay. 
and we can see that the connection has succeeded to that database. Now we're going to refresh our source metadata, which means that Agilius is going to use the connection to the database we just created to look at all of the tables and the columns within the tables of the Sekula database and return all the associated metadata to Agilius. From my list of tables, I'm going to load all the metadata from the customer table uh, so I can work towards creating my customer dimension. And you can see it's pulled all of my columns through from the customer table. And I'm going to remove a few columns that I don't want to pull through into my load table. And now what I'm going to do is start adding my metadata for each individual column. Now this will take a little bit of time, so I'm going to speed the video up until it's done. Okay, so now you can see that I've added metadata for all of my columns in my customer table, and I'm going to now run my ELT process. The first step will create the database structure for my data warehouse. And then the next step will process the ELT. So we'll actually move the data from our customer table into my load table in my data warehouse. So both of those processed correctly. So now we're going to switch over to SQL Server and have a look at the tables in the database. So as expected, our customer load table has appeared and you can see that all of the data has been populated through correctly. Now, one thing that I noticed when I was just looking at the table in SQL Server was that one of the columns uh, was called store ID, but it wasn't really consistent. I wanted to call that customer store ID. So I'm going to very quickly go into the metadata and change that column name to customer underscore store ID. Okay, so that's done. So I've moved my customer table into my loading area. What I want to do now is pull it through to staging. So I'm going to click create stage and then I'm going to just run through all of the columns, make sure I'm happy with all of those. And now I'm going to run the script. So I'm going to create the database structure and then click transform to load the data through. So now switching back to SQL Server, I'm going to refresh my data warehouse and I've confirmed that my staging table has populated through correctly. Now I've pulled my customer table through. What I'd like to do is to add some more information that relates to the customer. Now I know that this information is stored in the address table. So I'm pulling the address table through and once that's done, I'll be able to join the customer table in staging to my address table that I've just extracted into a load table. Okay, so that's all done. So now I'm going to create the join. So I'm joining my customer table and staging to my address table in my load area. I'm selecting the columns that I'd like to populate through. And I'm just going back to my source database to check the columns that are in the database. And after I click change, the fields will be added to the customer table in staging. Next, I'm going to add a few more fields from uh, a number of other tables to start building a really rich customer dimension. So I'm going to speed the video up now, but while it's playing, I'm going to be adding metadata from some additional tables. So the city table, the country table and the store table as well. So I can then join all of those tables to my customer table 
and create a really rich set of customer data in our staging table. Okay, so that's all done now. I'm gonna have a quick look at my data and that all looks good. So now I know I'm ready to create my dimension from my customer table in the staging area. So I'm going to click create dimension from the table. Just put in the surrogate key name that I'd like to use. And then I can have a quick look and check that I'm happy with all the columns that I want to pull through to my dimension. You can see all of the metadata has populated through. And I'm now going to run the scripts. So I'm going to create the dimension table and then populate the data. All of that's run. So I'm going to now switch over to SQL Server, refresh my database. And as you can see, we now have a customer dimension. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is to create my film, staff and store dimensions. Now this more or less follows the same process that I've already gone through. So I'm going to speed the video up while I do that, and then we'll continue on uh, for the date dimension that I'm going to populate later on from CSV. So all of my dimensions have now been created. What I'm going to do now is create another dimension, the calendar dimension, which will be sourced from a CSV. So I'm going to first add another extract source, which is my CSV file. Okay, so that's done. So now I'm going to refresh my metadata, which is going to look at all of the CSV files in the directory that I indicated. I can see I've got a date dimension file and I know that's my file that I'd like to use. In the same way that I did the customer dimension, I'm going to load the metadata from that table. So it's going to look at all of the data, all the columns in my CSV file. And then I can cycle through each column and add all my metadata in. Now I'm going to speed the video up while I do that. But once it's done, you'll see that I've created all of my dimensions, including dimension keys and null members in less than 57 minutes. Now I've created my calendar dimension. I know that I need to create role playing dimensions for both my rental date and return date. And I do this by simply selecting the calendar dimension and clicking create role. I can then add all of my metadata for each role playing dimension. I'm now going to speed the video up while I fill in the metadata for the two role-playing dimensions. Okay, so I've put all the metadata in for my role-playing dimensions. Let's go into a SQL Server and have a look at how that looks in the database. So you can see that I have my calendar dimension as a table, but now we have two views. So those SQL views contain all the metadata they entered for each of the role playing dimensions. And now that my role playing dimensions are done, all the work I need to do on my dimensions is complete. So in less than an hour and five minutes, I've completed all of my dimensions for the Secular database. 
So what's to do next? So I need to now create my fact table. So the fact table is created in a very similar way to the dimensions in that you find the data from your source database and you extract it into your load table and then into your staging area. And then we can start adding value by adding some calculations in. So now I'll speed up the recording until I get to my staging and we can work through some calculations together. So we've pulled through all the tables we need for our fact table into staging. What I'm doing now is adding a calculation for the rental duration in seconds. So we have two different dates that we're going to use for that. We have the rental date and then the return date. So Agilius allows us to add a custom calculation using SQL to calculate the duration between those two. Now I'm going to add similar columns for the rental duration in hours and the rental duration in days. Now that's done, I'm going to test my script to make sure that it runs. Okay, and that all worked. Now, before we create our fact table, let's have a quick look at the data to make sure that everything populated through correctly. You can see our rental duration in seconds, hours, and days. So what we're going to do now is we're creating a fact table from the staging table with all our data. In a very similar way to the dimensions, I click Create Fact, and I can also choose the columns that I'd like to populate through. And once that's done, I can run the script. So now if we move through to the fact tables, you can see that we now have a new fact table called Fact Rental Transactions. Now that we've created all of our facts and dimensions, all we need to do is create our star schema. So to do that, we're going to switch back to the fact table and start adding our dimensions. We select the dimension we'd like to link up and then the field within the fact table we'd like to link it to. And we just repeat that simply for every dimension we'd like to add. I'll speed the video up while we do the remaining dimensions. Now we're almost done. You can see that all of the dimensions have been linked up. So all we need to do is just test the scripts to make sure that everything works as expected. So we're going to run the full ETL process. So that looks great. So at this point, we're one hour and 22 minutes in, and we've created a full star schema from scratch using the Secular Data Warehouse. Just switching back into SQL Server, you can see that all the tables, including the fact table, are there. And you can see all of the data in the fact table is populated through as expected.
including all of the dimension keys. So all that's left to do now really is to get our star schema into Yellowfin. Now this is very easy in Agilius. All you need to do is to click export on the fact table and then select the metadata you'd like to export, whether it's Yellowfin, Click, Tableau, Power BI, etc. And you just click export. So that will save a file in the Agilius directory. So then you can log on to your BI tool of choice and import the metadata directly in. So this saves a lot of time in report development. So I'm going to log into Yellowfin with my account. And the first thing I need to do is add a new data source for my new data warehouse that I've created. So I'm going to click add data source and then select that I want to add a database and then complete all the details for the SQL server database that we created earlier. Okay, so we've entered all the details in. Let's just test the connection. Okay, we've made a connection to our database and we're going to save the data source. The next step is we're going to import the view, the metadata export that we exported from Agilius. And when we import it, we want to just select the data source that we just created and also the subfolder where we'd like to save the view. So we'll select our existing data source. We'll select a subfolder. And from here, all we need to do is click import. Great, so all of that imported correctly. So now we're going to create a report on our brand new data warehouse. Okay, so now we should see an interface with all of the various dimensions that we created. You can see that all of the metadata that we entered in during the uh, creation of the star schema has been uh, sent straight through to Yellowfin. So if we hover over a field, we can see the field name, the field description, and also where the uh, data has come from in Agilius. So using Yellowfin, we can very easily start building reports and charts with our data. Let's first have a look at the most successful movies by revenue at the DVD rental store. So we're going to find a film title and also rental payment. And I'll put a sort on the rental payment field. So you can see that Telegraph Voyage, Wife Turn and Zorro Arc are the top three movies in terms of the total rent rental received. Okay, so how about customers that generated the highest revenue? Let's find our customer first name and last name field. And we'll also drag in rental payment again. We'll drag another copy in so we can do uh, an advanced function to give us a top 10 list. Okay, we might remove those extra zeros and also add a sorting on the rank column. Great, so now we have our top 10 of customers in terms of revenue. You can see Carl, Eleanor and Clara have given us the most revenue. Okay, so now let's uh, build a chart using the data we just created. 
Okay, so you can see we now have a data visualization showing our top 10 customers. So finally, let's look at the sales over time. This time we're going to drag in our rental date field and also the same field as before, our rental payment field. Okay, let's step through and create a chart with the data we just created. Okay, I'd like to visualize this data as a column chart. I'm gonna make sure Yellowfin picks up the rental date as a time series. And looking at the data, it seems like the store was only trading on certain days. So maybe our DVD rental store is some kind of pop-up DVD store. In any case, the sales uh, increased for a while and then suddenly stopped and never really recovered after that. So there you have it, data to dashboard in less than 90 minutes. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I've given you a practical overview of how data warehouse automation can create business value through the efficient creation of data warehouses. Stay tuned for our next video where we'll continue to build upon the data warehouse we've just created. If you'd like to find out more about how Agilius data warehouse automation could significantly reduce the cost and time required to deliver a data warehouse for your organization, feel free to visit www.monero.net to get in touch with us. My name is Edgar Kautzner and see you in a future episode.